Hey and welcome to my next vlog and I thought I would do something to kind of talk about how I kind of got my own diabetes under control um, and so I thought I would just kind of relate and just talk about it and also just to make a disclaimer I'm not medically qualified to say this information is because everybody's version of being diabetic is ex well very different so if anybody's looking for any specific information about how to handle stress or having like a situation that have happened and their glucose goes up and um, this is how I did it for myself and and also um, go to your doctor for any other guidance or or permission or whatever to um, say like just guidance for you and so don't take my information as Bible so anyway I will explain everything and here it goes As you may notice, I'm in another room. Um, the thing is, there is noise kind of going on and and I wanted to be in a room where it's quiet. So, um, yeah. So, how I became diabetic. So, I'm going to do a very kind of short and to the point version. But if you want to know more about how I became diabetic, I will possibly link... Um, um, one of the videos that will explain more in detail about how I became diabetic. Um, so it's so Matthew put in a description, so um, a link, not a description, a link, um, that down there. So so that if you want to know more about my story with with being diabe di diabetic, um, there will be a link somewhere down there. So anyway. I am diagnosed with type 2 di di uh, diabetic, diabetes. Um, I was diagnosed in 2021 um, after a very complicated year of 2020, as I'm sure everybody has. But personally, just to kind of make it short but sweet, a majority of that was stress. And stress can contribute to somebody's kind of development of or developing diabetes. Because in my situation, I, I was having a lot of things happening in the space of short of a short time. It wasn't like one and that one situation and then the next one it was literally do 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 every single month near enough um and kind of having to do with that and 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 you know we all do things that when we are stressed out and apparently I did those as well um but I was very healthy person um uh you know I'm active I work out three days a week, um, so my version of type 2 diabetes was, um, I was basically losing weight through stress and other kind of con combinations of probably not eating the right things, and even though I felt that I was doing the right thing, which I was technically, it wasn't actually helping me in the long run for my body because I don't know how this is in other forms of measurements but um, I was 12 stone 5 pounds about January 2020 I think or December 20, 20, 2019 and then within about maybe August time of 2020 or September I was about I think nearing to just under nine round about I think oh god eight just 
just below nine stone. So I lost probably about uh, about three stone through stress and other things that kind of contributed to um, as well. And so that's how basically, and there were other things that kind of happen after that. And so that's basically my story of how my own diabetes kind of um, happened. Yes, I am healthy technically, but me being healthy, like I had, like, as I say in the other video, I had a typical view of, of somebody who thinks what a diabetes person looks like. Like I thought, well, I'm not overweight, so I'm not diabetic. That's not strictly true. <laughs> so it diabetes can attack whether if you're thin, skinny, athletic, um, overweight, whatever. It can still develop in one's own body. So um so with my own kind of diabetes I had to uh you know see what foods I could eat but without making my glucose go up and you would think obviously it's easy it's not so much when when you are kind of skinny or skinnier um and you have to put on weight but without making your glucose go high and that's actually really hard to do. So that was basically my whole kind of journey of building up my own strength and stuff. And now, gratefully, I'm I'm at a healthy weight where I should be for my height and frame. So that's pretty much my own kind of stuff. So what I've been eating, I've been eating avocados, salmon, black bean pasta, which is... You wouldn't really think, but actually it really does help. An edamame pasta. Any pasta that's um, made out of vegetable, basically, um, that I found really helps my body and my glucose in, in order to get back into line. And um, so doing that and kind of obviously doing trial and error, but the only simplest way that I can explain it is to, um, anything that looks fun, don't eat. Um, if there's anything that doesn't look fun, you have to eat. Yeah. But some healthy things can, can, can be fun, but anything that basically looks white, you don't eat or eat a very minuscule amount. But the only thing that really helped me with this is is a book and an app called Carbs and Cows. And that will, that's been my lifesaver the whole time because I want to go back to how I used to eat, but not to the same quantities, obviously. But um, this uh, book really helped me kind of understand um, carbohydrates, what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat. But if I'm eating certain stuff, then how much I should eat of it and how much I should eat more of the healthy stuff. So how did I get my diabetes under control? Um, it was a kind of a long process. Um, I unfortunately had a really bad experience, um, actually experiences again after, well, I've been studying, some of you may know that. Um, I've had other situations which were not nice to face and I wouldn't put that, put, put, put them on my worst enemy or give them to my worst enemy. Um, and all of a sudden, one day, I, I thought, look, I know that I'm not supposed to test my glucose, but I've got a feeling, well, because I've been under a lot of stress lately, 
and I may have been eating stuff that I shouldn't and I think I should kind of kick that into touch really so I did make my did my glucose my pin pricking test as I would have normally when I was on the medication glyglazide um Unfortunately, it was 17.0. So, just to explain, um, the healthy range for somebody who is diabetic, for somebody with glucose, is between 4.0 and 7.0. I was 17. That's not good. Um, so, I was stressing out, I was freaking out, did not know what to do, so I've just been, uh, you know, taking my medication as normal, and um, changing my diet a bit, and kind of getting back to how I was before, but not entirely, because obviously I didn't want to lose weight, so I was still eating salmon, avocados, um, fruit, and, well, fruit and veg, and kind of keeping all of that in check and eating other things as well that I thought would work unfortunately didn't work and then there were some things that did work and so but the thing is I can't say what they are because everybody's body is very different so again I was following the carbs and cows book like it was the bible <laughs> and so um it took me about maybe a week and two days to get it right, I think. And so I still have a little bit to do. Um, but other than that, I feel my body is kind of in check and it's fine and kind of trying to not lose weight and... Um, yeah, so trying to not lose weight but also eat the right stuff is extremely hard as I'm sure it is hard for anybody who's been overweight, who, who is overweight and, and trying to get it down because, well, ironically, I have also been in that position as well. So I've been 20 stone and overweight and I know full well what it feels like. So... Um, to try and lo lose weight, and, like, like, I commend you, like, well done, and so, but in my case now, I've had to put on weight, but healthy weight, and, like, I need to know what good carbs are, and bad carbs, and good sugars, and bad sugars, and so, it's like, oh my god, I can't take this anymore, so, even I get a bit fed up because when I was going through my situations at the time I thought right I'm gonna at least can have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then before you know it I am 17.0 so so like stress can kind of indirectly kind of affect a situation not be like the total cause of the situation but like be uh, be like the one of the contributors of of diabetes and not being helpful really so now the conclusion so how did i do it so even though i am on a f a form of metformin right now um, or a certain type of metformin, um, which would allow me to eat some sugars, um, I would suggest if you feel like, hey, maybe I should test my diabetes anyway to see if it's okay, then I don't see the problem in that. As long as you're not doing it obsessively, because stress on stress can also kind of contribute to diabetes going up anyway so for me personally I test every morning 
um, I don't test every morning and evening because I find for myself personally, it would just make me even more stressed. And so, and so I did that and it seemed to have helped. Um, and so I exercise still, I exercise, um, three days a week so I'm not obsessive about it and to kind of slowly incorporate like as I said earlier in the blog like salmon avocado and like bread if you can or like um if if you're in my position um because that's what I've had to do um and so like fruit and veg and 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 do the foods that you feel that you can eat and i would thoroughly recommend following the carbs and cows books and app or app because that really saved my life literally and helped me to get back to where i am now because i because before my situation i was on my my readings were literally 4.0 to 7.0 and probably a little bit over but that's fine um but but if you're in that type of situation where you're like oh my god what did i do okay so first of all calm down at least you kind of tested your blood um your blood glucose and you kind of red sirens are going off and so the second thing you need to do is slowly incorporate um, food back, food that you need to eat more of in your life and kind of slowly distance yourself from the cheeses, from milks, from anything that can spike up your glucose. So so whatever you you feel spikes that for for you um and then slowly kind of give yourself a break and maybe if you feel like you can test yourself every morning then that's fine because really readings do go down from from what i've researched um when you go to bed to the morning so it's best to that's when you get a true reading but if you're having um the um glucose blood test through your doctor um or the nhs in your country every 12 weeks then that should give you um the realistic number of where your glucose is because don't be too overwhelmed with the reading that comes up on your um glucose meter because even my doctor and i've had a word with the clinician practitioner that really the readings don't on the glucose meters don't really give a true reading but it gives an idea of where you are so if you can do that then that would be great. If not, then then you know just concentrate on food intake, um, eat, you know eat fruit and veg, and probably little bits of stuff of of what you used to like as well because that is important. Know what good carbs, bad carbs, um, good sugars, bad sugars. Uh, you know maybe go for a few alternatives. Um, with milk. Um. I've come started drinking uh soy milk with no sugar. Um I started drinking cashew milk, which I don't know whether that's viable, but anyway. Um and kind of look at other stuff. Um but you don't need to go for like the really expensive foods from Holland and Barrett, um a, a brand of shop here in um, the UK or you don't need to go for all that expensive stuff as long as you go for a pasta that is not white basically you can still eat whole wheat pasta but but having a vegetable pasta is actually less in calories 
So that is what I was told anyway. And so just kind of be kind to yourself. Don't go, don't get yourself overwhelmed and kind of take it a day at a time until that you start to feel better really. So again, it is going to take time. And I know that's big coming from me because I freaked when I found out about my 17.0 reading. So just kind of be kind to yourself, know what you're doing. And if you feel you need to speak to a doctor or a GP, go ahead and to kind of, again, be kind, be nice to yourself. And it happens to all of us at some point. So as long as you're aware and you know what you're doing, then that should be fine. So anyway, I will conclude this vlog for, for this occasion. So whenever I come, I'll have an idea and be like, whoa. So, um, yeah, so hope you're well. Take care. And I'll see you all soon. So bye. Ciao.